Algy Rose, and today we're going to be talking about a paper called Explained and Addressed on Critical Distinctions and Their Consequences. And this will be in response to what Vernanke calls the meaning crisis and looking for explanations for what is causing the meaning crisis, which is the mental health crisis, the spreading uh, mental health issues that people are facing, depression, suicide, things of that nature. And the paper is going to get into a distinction between explanation and address and warn that unfortunately today we've conflated these terms together and that we mostly live in an age of pure explanation. And what I mean by that is if I were to come up to you and I were to say that I'm having a bad day and I would say, I wonder why I'm having a bad day. And you looked at me and you say, well, there was this big bang, then these carbon molecules come together and then somehow those turned into a living organism. And then we had a process where mammals turn into other mammals and so on and so forth and then tribes uh, were trying to, then some hunter-gatherer societies came together around religions to form tribes and that was the birth of civilization and here we are. Well, if that would occur, uh, the person uh, may be, it may be explained why they're having a bad day, but they're probably not going to feel like you've um, addressed why they're having a bad day. You haven't addressed them. Um, you've explained how they came to be here, to be in this place, um, but you haven't addressed them as a person. Um, if I were to explain to you how your body worked, how your lungs worked, how your organ worked, um, if I were to explain to you how the economy worked, um, why society functions the way that, that it does, why you're expected to get a job, why you must earn money in order to make a living, all of that would explain the circumstances you're in, would explain how your body works the way that it works. Um, but it will not have addressed you and who you are and why you're here and what it mean, what, what does life mean to you. And unfortunately, we tend to think that if I can explain you, then I have addressed you. But really what I've done is explained you away. And that's what's happening a lot. And I think, unfortunately, since we think that I get the answers I need as long as I'm giving a good explanation, I'm given a good explanation, um, because we make that mistake, we go about dealing with people's big questions and hurts and wounds with explanations when really what they need is addressed, to be addressed in their subjectivity, in their personhood, in their particular life circumstances. And because we conflate explain and address and simply explain people, we can't stop the meaning crisis. We can't stop the mental health crisis and it just gets worse and worse and worse. Um, Cadell Lass, Dr. Cadell Lass and I discuss on a conversation with Hegel the difference between the truth and the absolute. And the truth is, to allude to Wittgenstein, everything that is the case, while the absolute, alluding to the last chapter in Hegel's Phenomenology of Spirit, the absolute is everything that is the case plus us, plus our subjectivity, plus our personhood, which is observing the facts and as a result, and consequently changing the facts. And as the facts change, that simultaneously changes us and how we see the, see the facts. And that becomes a self-feeding cycle. And so the absolute is always alive and it's always changing. Well... Um, the Enlightenment, which had a lot of pluses, it gave us modern science in many ways, um, bracketed out the subject, it bracketed out the person in order to get at things better. So the idea of, say, as Jonathan Rouse talks about in The Kindly Inquisitor, the idea of science is to determine the results that no person in particular would see if they were in the lab. So what we mean by that is it doesn't matter who's in the lab, as long as the experiment is followed correctly, um, the person will see the same results. So person and subjectivity become irrelevant. They're bracketed out and that's how we determine scientific knowledge. And gradually what has happened is we've kind of concluded that all knowledge is um, found and the value of knowledge is, and its reliance is contingent on the degree that we bracket out the subject. Well, unfortunately, if we bracket out the subject in our thinking and if we think um, and if we make all of our efforts about finding the truth as opposed to the absolute, well, then it shouldn't surprise us that we have a meaning crisis because literally we are the problem. We're in the way of the truth. We keep people from getting to how things really are. So um, we need to be bracketed out and, and thus we have the meaning crisis. Um, there is also a problem where arguably neoliberalism and capitalism in general, even though it's constantly talking about think for yourself, be your own person, they too bring about a certain flattening to cultures. Towns get the same stores, they get the kind of same characteristics, they lose their individuality. So as capitalism raises up the individual, it simultaneously um, takes out the meaningful differences, uh, the meaningful, you get, you get a bunch of individuals, but not characters per se, not individual characters. And this is explored in Belonging Again, but that also contributes to the meaning crisis because 
it doesn't matter who you are, you're expected to follow a certain track, to go to school, get a career, have a family, um, retire, and so on and so forth. And that track also um, attacks, hinders personhood, individuality. So we as human beings, the other thing too is we tend to think that problems are, all of our thinking, all of our problem solving is directed toward problems we can solve, which are problems we can make vanish, we can do away with, and Johannes talks brilliantly on this. And a lot of explanation, which is in the business of solving problems and making them go away. But ultimately the human person and our thrownness in the world to relate to Heidegger is not a problem we can solve, but only one we can manage and learn to live with. And when we're not being addressed, when our subjectivity is not being taken seriously, when our personhood is not treated as something valuable, well, then we're not given the resources to manage the problem of ourselves. Um, in fact, we're just sort of given a bunch of explanations when we're wondering why it's so hard to get through the day, when we're wondering um, why it is we value this cup that our grandmother gave us so much and we're just given an explanation about brain scans and brain parts of the brain that light up when there's a, an emotional connection and dopamine releases. Um, when we're told about that or we're told that the reason we're sad is because we don't have enough dopamine. Well, that's an explanation, but we don't feel addressed. We don't feel like what we don't feel like we've been addressed for why we feel these things. In fact, we've kind of been objectified. We've been turned into an object, something that kind of undergoes dopamine and chemical changes in the brain. We're just an object undergoing. It's almost like rock, a cliffside being battered against by waves. We're just objects caught up in a flow of things we cannot control. And so we feel explained away. Uh, as opposed to addressed, and so the meaning crisis gets worse and worse. Now, at the same time, if we just if we're just addressed, arguably before the Enlightenment, you had societies of pure address as opposed to the world today of pure explanation. If you asked um, why you were here, you were told that God made you and that God loves you, say in a Western Christian society, and that would address you as a person. It would make you feel like a creator, um, someone who was loved by God. Your personhood and your individuality would be addressed. But you really wouldn't be explained. You wouldn't know the scientific process that gave rise to you. And the problem with that is when you have a dress without explanation, then it feels fragile. Um, it just takes a little scientific investigation and your whole schema in which you feel addressed and find meaning is destroyed. And that's arguably what happened. We had a society, a world of pure address, which Charles Taylor t talks about an enchanted world, and that was shattered by science. And we haven't recovered from that. And we're just, and all we have now is explanation. <laughs> and so that, that hasn't proven good enough. And so the meaning crisis has gotten worse and worse. What we need is a dialectical relationship between explanation and address. We need both. Um, you, you have Graham Harmon who talks about undermining and overmining to determine what an object is. If I ask you, what is a cat? And I tell you it's a bunch of atoms, that's um, undermining it. I'm going too deep. But if I say, what is, you know, what is a cat? And you were to talk about, oh, it's a feline. It's an animal part of the animal kingdom. That's kind of overmining. That category is too broad. So what we need is to duo mind, to find this middle between undermining and overmining for, do for Dr. Harmon in order to get at what a thing really is. Well, likewise, in order for us to feel satisfied and fulfilled, um, we need to strike a balance, a middle space between explanation and address. Um, not just one or the other, um, as hopefully the works of O.G. Rose make clear. Basically, pure anything is problematic. Um, we should um, always be dealing with dialectics. And you know, children are a good example of why if we ask the why question too much, if we don't know when to be satisfied, when to stop, um, they, children will just ask why to everything. You know, they ask, why is the sky blue? And you explain and they say, well, why is that the case? And you explain the atmosphere and on and on and on. And they prove to be the ultimate deconstructionists. One why question goes to the next and you can't stop the chain. If, and if someone is not, if they don't know when to be satisfied um, along that long chain of why questions, well, then they will be deconstructed. The problem with pure explanation is it ultimately does lead to deconstruction because one explanation leads to another, leads to another, leads to another, and eventually you're just a collection of atoms and nothing more. And so you've been explained away. You have not been addressed. And to take seriously um, address is to take seriously our craving for meaning, our, crea our craving for creative ex expression, our craving to be understood, to communicate. We get much into the, the side of the person and the expression of the person and the relation of the person and the understanding of the person in itself in the universe. Um, to take address seriously is to take the fact 
as important, as mattering, uh, as, as meaningful, as relevant when I say that that tree out front was my grandmother's favorite, that becomes part of the tree. That is not irrelevant. It's not compositionally part of the tree, but it's phenomenologically part of the tree. And it's part of the tree to me. It is a serious component of the tree's identity and its place in the world. To leave out the fact that it was grandmother's favorite is to fail to address that tree. And it's also to fail to address me because I believe that tree was grandmother's favorite and the fact that it was grandmother's favorite matters to me. The fact that you say, well, it came out of a seed, you know, it, it, it's due to photosynthesis is what keeps it alive. Well, that's all explanations and all of that because of those explanations, it's possible for me to find meaning in the tree because otherwise the tree would not exist to be a, gra to be a source of meaning. But the tree cannot be reduced to those explanations. The fact that it was grandmother's fa favorite matters, and it matters to me. And so you must, you must take that dimension of the tree seriously if you are going to address me. We need to move out of this age of pure explanation. We need to take the subject seriously. Otherwise, this is going to continue to be a world that we're not part of. Uh, we're always going to be searching for the truth but never the absolute. And so we are going to just continue to be the problem in the way of truth. And so all of our investigations into the meaning of life will be processes by which we are removed from life. And what meaning will we find then? This has been OG Rose. For more, please visit ogrose.com and thank you for your time.